you doing? How's it going, sir? Great. Uh, I just wanted to let you know I was just flying around the area and uh, I just decided to drop by because uh, I'm inviting people to church. Do you go to church anywhere? No, I don't go to church anywhere. Oh, great. Uh, well, one thing that's even more important than going to church, um, this is a question I want to ask you. Um, if you were to die today, are you 100% sure you go to heaven? Yeah, I think I would go to heaven. I'm a nice guy. You are? Yeah. Can I just show you from the Bible how you could be 100% sure? Sure. Okay, great, great. Um, basically, um, you look like a nice guy. And, uh, you know, the Bible says that um, as much as we might think that we're nice, you know, that's not enough. Because according to the Word of God, we're all sinners. Um, basically, let me just show you this. Um, there are a few things you need to know and believe uh, to get to heaven. God shows us in the Bible, and he gives us uh, the exact way to get there. Um, the first thing I want to show you is uh, from Romans 3.23. Uh, let me just show you real quick. All right, here we go. Okay. All right, this is what it says. Romans 3.23. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. So basically, um, the Bible is telling us that all of us have sinned and we come short of the glory of God. So basically, we're not good enough, you know, um, to, to get to the glory of God, you know, to be able to face God out of ourselves because we're all sinners. And God is a perfect God, you know, He's sinless. You know, uh, I don't know if you ever read the Bible where it talks about uh, the creation, Adam and Eve. Uh, they lived in the garden. It was a perfect garden. And they sinned against God. And you know what they did? They ate a fruit that God told them not to eat. And just because of that one sin, they couldn't be in God's presence. You know, God actually kicked them out of the garden just because of they ate a fruit that God told them not to eat. And I'm pretty sure we've done a lot worse things than just eat a fruit that God told us not to do. You know, we're all sinners, basically. And God has just given us an example here that he has no tolerance for sin. There could be no sin in his presence. You know what I mean? The next verse I want to show you is uh, found um, in Romans uh, 6.23. And this is what that says. Romans 6.23, this is what it says. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. So, the Bible is telling us that because of our sin, we have, we have all earned death, which is separation from God forever in hell. You see, the Bible talks about a certain death. You know, I know we have the physical death when we die and we just leave this world. But the death that the Bible is talking about here is what the Bible calls the second death. The second death means that you're separated from God forever in hell. And I'm going to show you from the Bible uh, how God lays this, you know, he lays this out for us in his word. Uh, this is found in Revelation 21.8. God has... Uh, some explanation here about the second death. Revelation 21.8. Good. All right, here we go. <clears throat> but the fearful and unbelieving and the abominable and murderers and whoremongers and sorcerers and idolaters and all liars shall have their part in the lake which burneth with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. Now, these people, according to the Bible, the Word of God, they're, they're going to have their part, their part in a lake that burns with fire. The Bible also tells us that this lake is going to burn forever and ever and ever. So it doesn't mean that dying... Uh, gives you a ticket away from punishment, you know. No, what, that, what, what it means by death 
you know, because it says the second death. That means you're going to be in this lake forever. You're not going to go with God in heaven. I mean, and this is pretty scary stuff, right? Yeah. Um, but you see, we do not have to die and go to hell forever because Jesus Christ paid the penalty for our sins. You know, he basically took our place. Basically, he said, you know what? God, I know even though they deserve to go to, go to hell, I'm going to pay the price. I'm going to give my life on the cross. You know, so Jesus, you know, they killed him brutally just so that we could be saved. You know, he, 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 didn't, he doesn't want us to go to hell. You know, so that's why he, he died on the cross for us. You know, he didn't just do it for fun. He didn't just do it because, uh, you know, he felt like it. You know, that was a brutal death that he went through. And there was a purpose for that. And only him could do that. You see, I cannot pay for your sins because I'm a sinner too. So that's why we needed Jesus, who was perfect, you know, to be able to pay in our place for our sins. You follow me? Mm -hmm. Now, let me show you this. I'm going to back this up with the Bible too because uh, uh, let me just go back to Romans, uh, Romans 5.8. Let me show you a verse here. Romans 5.8. Here we go. Romans 5 8. But God commanded his love toward us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. See, so Jesus Christ died for us. You know, he died instead of us. You know, while we were yet sinners. So that's how much God loved us. You see, even though God is a, is, a, is a very just God, you know, He's a judge. So His justice has to be met. We're sinners. And He has to punish sin. Basically what He did is, you know, He had Jesus pay for our sins. Okay? Now, to go to heaven, you must decide to rely on Jesus and what He did on the cross to get you there. You know what I mean? Don't depend on your good works or a church. You know, just because you go to church or you're a nice guy, that doesn't mean you go to just, uh, heaven. You know, it doesn't guarantee you getting into heaven. Okay? The only way to go to heaven, the only way that God promises according to his word, he promises there's going to be no penalty, is if we accept the payment that Jesus made for us. That payment has to be made, and only Jesus could make that payment for us. So you got to trust Jesus completely to go to heaven. You follow me? Now, uh... Let me show you another verse. You probably heard this verse. It's one of the most famous verses in the Bible. Uh, this is found in John 3.16. John 3.16 is what it is. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. You know, so it says, if you believe in the just Son of Jesus, you're going to have everlasting life. Now, what do you have to do, according to the Bible, to have everlasting life? Believe, on Lord Jesus. believe, right? That's what it says. Whoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Now, is everlasting something that lasts forever? Yes. Of course, right? So, basically, that's what it says. You know what I mean? Um, it's basically a gift. You know, God is giving it to you forever. You know, if I gave you this Bible right now, okay? Go ahead and take that Bible, okay? And I say, I give you this Bible forever. This is your everlasting Bible. Can I come back next week and say, hey, give me my Bible back? No. I can't, right? Because I told you it's, it's everlasting. Right. So it's, God is making it clear here that he's giving us everlasting life. You know what I mean? Uh, he's doing it for us. He's giving it to us as a gift. It's not something that you have to do. You know what I mean? Like if I told you, hey, Go over there and watch my plane right now. I mean, uh, it, and then, uh, is that a free gift? If I told you, hey, for me to give you this Bible, you got to go and watch my plane. You got to do this. Is that a gift? No, because you're working for it, right? You have to do something for it. Well, the Bible says that uh, Jesus gives us free everlasting life, which means you don't have to do anything. You follow me? Mm -hmm. Let me show you another verse that's found in the book of John. Um, this is also John 3, um, chapter 
36. This is what it says here. He that believeth on the Son hath everlasting life. Once again, he that believeth on the Son hath everlasting life. What that means is, you believe in the Son, you have everlasting life. Not maybe you will have, not well, guys got to think about it, not well, it depends, you know, uh, what you do after that. No, if, if you believe on the Son, you already have everlasting life, according to the Word of God. And he that believeth not on the Son shall not see life, but the wrath of God abideth on him. I don't want to take that chance. You know, have the wrath of God, Almighty God, you know, abide on me. No, I want to believe on the Son so that I have everlasting life. You know what I mean? So basically, according to the Bible, what do you have to do to uh, to have everlasting life? Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, right? That's exactly right. Right? <clears throat> so if you believe these facts, these verses, and you sincerely want to uh, trust Jesus to get you to heaven, <clears throat> you know, you could tell him now, and it's as simple as that. You know what I mean? A lot of people think that, well, I'm not ready yet to get saved. You know, I, I have to get my life straight. I have to straighten certain things out. You know, I, I have too many sins that I have to work out. Listen, I understand that, but the most important thing is for you to get saved. You know, the Bible says today is the day of salvation. You know, it doesn't say, uh, well, you got to be perfect first and then you get saved. No, you get saved, and once you get saved, you know, through Bible reading, fellowship, going to church, prayer, you know, you start changing your life. You, you start becoming more and more closer to God. You know what I mean? Uh, this doesn't mean that once you get saved and you have everlasting life, you're going to heaven. It doesn't just mean that you're going to do whatever you want and get away with it. Because the Bible also tells us that God punishes the child whom he loves. So if you misbehave, if you don't follow the commandments of God, if you do something that is going to offend God, you know, he's going to punish you. Just like a father will punish their child. You know, just like, uh, let's say a child misbehaves, right? That child doesn't stop being that father's child. No, it means he's not going to be as close to his father, and his father's probably going to, you know, he's going to punish him. You know I mean? But he doesn't stop being his father. You follow me? So basically what that means is uh, <clears throat> being saved, and going to heaven is not about what you do, it's about what Jesus did for us. You follow me? So, uh, once you get saved, though, doesn't mean you can do whatever you want. You know, you have to uh, um, be close to God, you have to pray, you have to uh, follow His commandments if you want to have a close relationship with Him. If you don't, like a good father, He's going to punish you. Now, the difference between a person that's saved and a person that's not saved, we're so blessed to get punished by God if we misbehave. Because he's going to correct us, but he's still going to bring us home to heaven. Now, there's people out there that they get away with murder, they do everything they want, and they never get punished. You know, they live, they, they look like they, they live happily, they have uh, all the money in the world, they look successful. But guess what? Those people, they might not get, get punished in this world, but they're going to get punished in, in hell forever. I'd rather get punished here and go to heaven. You know what I mean? However, you don't have to get punished because if you just, if you just obey God, you know, He's gonna be, uh, He's gonna have a good relationship with with you, and you're gonna have a good relationship uh, with Him. You know what I mean? So, uh, would you like to accept the payment that Jesus made for you so you can go to heaven? Of course. Okay, that's great. Uh, what I like to do is I like to lead you in prayer. I like to make a prayer for you so that you could accept uh, the Lord Jesus as your Savior. Okay. So what we're gonna do now is uh, I want you to bow your head and pray with me. Dear Jesus, Dear Jesus, I know I'm a sinner. I know I'm a sinner. I believe you died for my sins. I believe you died for my sins. And I trust you completely to go to heaven. And I trust in you completely to go to heaven. From now on, from now on, I believe, I believe that you died to, to pay for my sins. That you died to pay for my sins. Please take me to heaven when I die. Please take me to heaven when I die. Amen. Amen. All right, congratulations. This might be the most important step you made in your life. Now let me ask you a question. You have a Bible? I actually got some Bibles in my airplane. Let, let me just uh, grab a Bible for you. Okay.
this is a gift that I have for you. Uh, it's a King James Bible, okay? And uh, I recommend that you read this on a daily basis because it's going to tell you about what God wants, you know, the things he wants you to do. And it's going to help you grow with God, you know, uh, and, and get to know him. The best way to get to know him is through his word, okay? And I would recommend that you start reading the New Testament, uh, especially in the book of John, okay? Uh, when you start, this is the New Testament here, okay? And then you have Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. So I would advise you to start, you know, reading with the book of John. And then once you do that, uh, you go back to, uh, to uh, Matthew and just read through the whole New Testament. And then after that, you go through uh, from the beginning and read, you know, from Genesis all the way through the end. And read it as much as you can. Pray every day. And, uh, you know, uh, in our church, we have services at 11 o'clock, so you're definitely invited. And I uh, hope to see you there. Okay. Thank you very much. All right. Congratulations. Thank nice you. to meet you. Nice to meet you, too. Take care. God bless okay. you. See you soon. Thank you.